I, I, I think that you are uh, on to uh, an important aspect of this. And when we have made reference to the way America is changing, um, it's not, it's, to even say it's niching, what you're describing, is not even accurate because think back to, uh, you know, the days where every big city in America had a very vibrant and thriving community of ethnic newspapers, right? Mm -hmm. And that sort of waned for a while, but now it's back and it's growing. Um, the major mainstream media companies for a while in the 80s, I remember when the Miami Herald began publishing uh, El Nuevo Herald. The LA Times began publishing a Spanish language newspaper. The San Jose Mercury News used to publish uh, a Vietnamese language newspaper. They sort of dabbled in it for a while, but they essentially have given up on that market share. And these communities are growing. So that is, you're absolutely right, that's, that's like one of the only growth sectors in print media, especially. And it's not just Spanish language either. I mean, I'm from uh, Northern California, and when I go back to San Francisco, there are an array of Asian language publications all around the Bay Area that didn't exist even 10 years ago. So um, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, clearly it's good, but I don't, I don't quite see how the sort of the prevailing media, whether it's print or broadcast or internet, is, I don't, you know, they, they, they don't really see their stake in that, which is, which is at their own peril. And once again, what Amy's pointing out is that these are initiatives that were finding good when the economy was good and we had the money. And I think people don't realize that this is their potential for growth, that right. if we want an economic model that can serve a, an actual growing media-consuming population. But the that, will isn't there for them to, to you know, because who's, because who's in charge, not people yeah. who live this reality, who are right. around bilingual speakers. I think really... Um, Language is culture, and that when you talk about diversifying a newsroom, one of the things that should be looked at is language abilities of reporters. And again, this was an emphasis during a lot of the next generation type initiatives, a program called the Minority Editorial Training Program that I was with with the um, former um, LA Times Tribune Corporation, which, which no longer exists. And being bilingual was almost a requirement to get in there. And I think that's, as long as we look at racial and experiential diversity that languages should, you can't learn a language without starting to understand the culture. And that's something we should really emphasize in the next generation of journalists. Thank you, sir. Uh, last question here. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Elise Simmons. I'm a freelance writer. And this is kind of a two-part question that was inspired by something Mr. Torres and something um, Ms. Alexander said. Um, Mr. Torres, you said a lot of the problems with how minorities are seen in the media is that we don't um, own the content. We don't own television stations. We're not um, producers in charge of, of what gets on air. Um, would you say that for up-and-coming journalists that want to be um, reporters that want to be on air should consider, um, you know, news director positions, should consider producer positions because in some sense they can control content? I mean, everyone would agree with that. Um, absolutely. That, wait, what was your second part? I don't want to cut you off. Oh, and then the second part was, um, Ms. Alexander, you talked about hiring managers that promote people that they're comfortable with, a lot of times people that look like them. Then how do minority journalists market themselves um, to those, those types of hiring managers. I still want to, you know, I love journalism. It's my passion. I don't care who I have to get along with as long as I get to write. How do you market yourself with, with people like that? Well, I, I'll, you know, Clarence and everyone else should speak to who work in the newsroom. But I, absolutely, uh, you should try, if that's your, your desire to, to work in journalism and to be a, in a management position, if that's what you want, not everyone wants to be a manager now. You know, uh, you know, some people would rather be a columnist and have a little more autonomy of what they can say than have to like deal with news budgets and stuff like that. But if that's what you want to do because you in a decision making position, you should. I know journalism in the future of it looks like uh, kind of depressing the discussion of it. But if you really love journalism, pursue what you love. You have to do it. You, you just don't know what we don't know. The, the future of newspapers is we're talking about right now. I mean, we really don't know how it's going to play out. I think newspapers are going to be around. I think, uh, you know, more people read newspapers every, more people read newspapers today than ever before. You're just reading it online. You know, so you have to, you're going to have, it's going to be figured out, I think, this new economic model one day. And so I think journalism may, you know, uh, newspaper journalism may, may come back up again um, in a different kind of form maybe. But do what you need to, you know, follow your passion. 
Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I got a stroke. Okay.